Morning, everyone. I'm Karen with Member Find Me, and I'm here with our special guest to talk about getting better member website engagement and community partner website engagement. And I'm going to go ahead and let everybody that's here today um, introduce themselves. If you're interested in joining, we still have some space. You can join in or ask questions in the comments. So, Morgan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I'm Morgan from the Community Relations And Dennis? I'm Dennis Boyer, a co founder of Member Find Me and big fan of the Wine and Food Foundation of Texas. Okay, and we've got our special guest today, Marshall, with the Wine and Food Foundation of Texas as well. And they've been doing some really great things with their website. So, Marshall, please. Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your organization and what it does. Sure. So my name is Marshall Jones. I'm the executive director of the Wine and Food Foundation of Texas. And yes, that is a real legal nonprofit. Um, in short, we eat, drink, and give money away. Um, our mission says that we're a membership nonprofit using our passion for wine and food to better the health, wealth, and well-being of our community. Uh, so we host uh, best-in-class wine and food events, a very large wine auction uh, in order to raise funds, and then we give those back to the community through scholarships, grants, and uh, just community benefit awards. Tell us a little bit about some of the work you've been doing to engage some of your community partners online. Yeah, so I was introduced to Dennis with Member Find Me um, probably about a year ago from one of our advisory council members uh, who we work with at Frost Bank. And through that introduction, the idea came up with this member business directory. It's just kind of a better way to put your um, sponsors and corporate businesses on your website. As we all know, especially in the nonprofit world, recognition is very important, uh, but it is for the business world as well. And so what we typically do when you look at a typical website is you see someone's logo, uh, maybe a link to their business, and maybe an email or a phone number to call and a very small blurb about that business. And they're all very static and it's just kind of a long running list of all the, the businesses that you work with. So we were introduced to what I would consider a much better option in this case. Um, it's a, a member business directory is probably the best term for it. Uh, it's where actually everything shows up in a credit card or a business card size. Uh, there's even a map on the top of our website to show you where all these businesses are. And then when you open up that, that business card, it actually opens up a website that, um, that mirrors to an effect the website of the business itself. There can be photos and links and information and contact information, social media links and what have you. So it's a much more robust way for businesses that you're working with and typically those that are paying you the most amount of money to be members of your organization to get something uh, a little bit better back out of that. Um, in this case, better information about their business, better information about their contact information, better information about their social um, website uh, or social sites. And probably most importantly for us is because that is still hosted on our website, it's really great for our SEO in that you're still spending on our website for a long, long period of time rather than clicking a link, going out to their website, possibly coming back to our website. This way it's very dynamic, uh, it's quick, and it's, it's um, I would say, even energetic. What we're doing now, uh, what we're even more excited about, when we started with Member Find Me, the process was is that we would send the information on the new business to Member Find Me and they would onboard that business onto our directory. Now we've gone in another direction where we help the business themselves onboard their own information. And we think that's really important. And the, the main reason we think um, this is really going to improve our relationship with our community partners is this allows our community partners or our member businesses, that's what we call them. Um, this allows our community partners to manage and control their information themselves. So for instance, we have a happy hour tonight. You're all invited. Max's Wine Dive. We have a happy hour tonight at Max's Wine Dive. And if Max's Wine Dive wants to upload pictures from that event, they can do so as quickly as tonight rather than having static pictures on their website. Um, 
you know, that may be from an event a year ago or, or something long term. This could be something that where they could do that on the spot um, and upload that information very quickly. I also noticed today in looking at one of our member directories that there's been a change in the chef at the restaurant and they were able, rather than having to email or call us and wait for us to make that change, they're able to log in and make that change immediately with that new information so that they're as up to date as they could be on their regular website. And I know that's a very long explanation, um, but it's part of why we're so excited about the member business directory. Not only does it help our SEO and help our members gain more information, it helps our member businesses in that they can have more up to date information, better information um, than just your static here's a small blurb about our organization and a link. So they are responding well to the uh, change and being more engaged and being able to make the changes themselves and, and get involved. Have you, have you rolled that out? Does everyone know and how are they responding? We have started rolling that out and we wanted to do it, you know, strategically and work with one, two, three partners at a time um, and just see how it kind of works and feels, make sure that they're comfortable doing that, that they understand how to log in. And it's as simple as we have found it to be. Uh, of course, with, with any business, some are going to be very dynamic and some are going to update that a lot, especially those that have social media directors, um, special web directors, IT departments, things like that. Some will be a little bit slower to upload, but as long as the static information they have on there is quality, uh, it doesn't have to be updated all the time, but it's the fact that they can update it should they wish to do so. I think one of the tendencies for a lot of nonprofit organizations is to make as little work as possible for their members or their community partners because they're always afraid if they have to do anything, they're, they're just going to drop off. How have so your community partners responded to taking a more active role and how did you approach that? So the answer the, I'll answer them out of order, I'll answer with how we approach that. The key really is, you know, we have about probably 40 or 45 community partners. Some of these we can reach out to in person and set up a meeting with them and go discuss this with them, take our computer, show them their website, and they're like really wowed when they see it for the first time. They're like, that's incredible. I had no idea that we have this new capability. It doesn't cost them any more. It's something that we've rolled in as part of their benefit. Um, and we hope that we will gather, obviously, more businesses willing to pay for that over time and, and build out that directory. So how we approach it, um, either one, we just uh, we can just send an email and a link and say, hey, you now have the ability to update your own information. Please log in here. It's very simple to do so. They put in their active email, ask for a password, and within minutes or even seconds, they're logged in. What we really want to do is meet with most of them one-on-one. -on -one and take the time to really show it to them. I did this with a community partner last week and she was just absolutely amazed and, and she's already updated the information two times that I can tell uh, since we had that meeting. Again though, um, if there's a business, a member business or community partner that just, that's not for them and they're not the kind of business that's going to update that, uh, we do it a lot with restaurants, their hours are different, their personnel is different, they don't typically have an SEO manager um, on site then that's something that we can do internally. It's very easy for us to draft pictures from them, from their website, logos, information, and we can upload that information for them. So it can either be done by us full service or it can be done by them self-service. It's really their call. Okay. Now you also engage a lot through your events calendar. What are some of the things you've done and has there been any response on that? Yes and yes. Um, we keep a very robust calendar, or at least I used to think we always kept a very robust calendar until we've gone to this new, um, with the new member Find Me package, which really ties our calendar into registration for events unlike we've ever had before. Uh, our calendar now is extremely robust. If you go to our website, um, winefoodfoundation.org, and click on our events calendar, uh, you will see that there are events almost every single day on that calendar, either they're our events, they're our meetings, or they're community partner events, or they're events in the community that we have agreed that we want to promote because um, it's good for uh, the food and wine, the culinary and viticulture arts in Austin or in Central Texas, or even uh, now we have a chapter out in West Texas, and so we have a lot of events occurring there. What's also nice is the, the calendar's color-coded, something we didn't have before, so now we can say, 
you know, High Plains chapter events are in this color, High Plains um, community partner events are in this color, and so people can start to educate themselves on what those events are. Uh, we've started putting all of our meetings on there. Our board members have, have long asked for a way to manage uh, a calendar of all of our meetings and events that they can see. So now we put all of our meetings on there, and it's very simple in registration to put a question. Um, the one that we use is, do you have permission by the Wine and Food Foundation or Board of Directors to attend this meeting? And if they can't click yes to that question, they can't register for that meeting. Okay. What are some of the things that have changed since getting your um, community partners more active in the calendar and the directory with your organization? Well, certainly there's no way to do a direct correlation between who has signed on and who hasn't signed on. But as I mentioned, we just opened a High Plains chapter um, in West Texas in the Lubbock area. And they just had their first membership drive about uh, three weeks or a month ago. And this was after we started with Member Find Me and we were able to show them what it looks like on our website. And we were surprised by how many people signed on as a business as opposed to signed on as an individual. And I, I have to say that's directly attributable to the assets that they get off of our website. There's no, um, there's really no other reason to sign up for the more expensive business membership other than promotion. Uh, and clearly, the ability to do those with the membership directory is the best promotion we can give them. And Morgan, what has your experience been with the members and getting them active online? Um, I Great. I think your microphone is cutting out a little bit, but but if you listen hard, you, you get the good information. Marshall, what advice would you have to some organizations that are looking to get more um, more membership involvement online? Is it that key one-on-one -on -one meeting, or are there other things they can do to really um, inspire their members to, to become more involved? So here's the unadvertised sales pitch. When we uh, first met with Member Find Me, the biggest challenge we've always had with any contact management system has been membership management. And, you know, a lot of nonprofits um, are using Salesforce because you get up to 10 licenses for free. It's a super robust system. Uh, quite frankly, it's too robust. Unless you have a team that can do nothing but manage Salesforce for you, uh, it can take an entire employee's time trying to manage um, your contact management system. And that doesn't make any sense. There are other options out there, such as Razor's Edge um, and some of the more expensive options well too expensive for my foundation uh, and really not necessary for my foundation. So by going to a membership driven software, in this case starting with the member business directory, it really empowers not only us to drive more sales to the customer, but it really drives more ability for the customer to empower themselves to be part of the process. And that's really what you want at the end of the day. You want your members to be advocates for your business. You want your um, members to be advocates for your mission in your nonprofit, but also for what you do for them. And so clearly this opens up a two-way street that wasn't available before, other than us reaching out and you know by email once a year and saying, has any of your information changed? And if so, please send it to me and we'll put it in the static website. Um, now it empowers everyone to be much more dynamic and to be part of the conversation. How about the WordPress side of the, the website? Have you found the WordPress side to be easy or difficult or difficult in the beginning and then easy or you're just ready to throw it all out? What has what the experience with WordPress been? So I went to college before computers were part of college. I didn't even have a computer in college. Um, I had a Commodore 64 with a tape drive at one point in time. <laughs> the point is I don't know anything about website management really. I mean this is all new to me. Um, the fact I'm on this Google Hangouts is pretty impressive for me. I am now very comfortable going into our WordPress site. I can publish, I can make additions, I can make changes, I can find things very easily. It's very intuitive. Um, it's hard to break, which is even more impressive because that's something I'd be inclined to do. Uh, but even if you try something and it doesn't do what it was supposed to do, it doesn't break the website, it just simply doesn't show up 
maybe where or how you thought it would, and it's very easy to make that adjustment um, and change that. Most importantly, though, is the whole dashboard idea, not just on the WordPress side, on the software side. The fact that, you know, for a meeting tomorrow, I can quickly go right onto my dashboard. I can see exactly how many members I have, how many I have at each level, um, how many have renewed, how many need to renew, and just the ease of access to information is what's so important. Uh, but more, more to the WordPress side, because just like the membership directory, because it is so much easier to use, so much easier to upload, and so much easier to maintain information on, we're much quicker. We put pictures up immediately after events rather than having pictures from an event, you know, three, six, eight months ago. People can log on the very next day after an event to our website and say, oh, hey, there I was at that event, and boy, did I have a really good time. And so it just builds a lot of positive affect that way. Okay. Now you just you launched a new chapter, but you also launched a new group as well. You guys have been crazy busy over there. Tell us a little bit about the crew and what's happening with that. And for those of you out there watching it in Austin, Texas, you might learn about a new group you're interested in getting involved with. You bet. Thanks, Karen. Um, and I'll let Morgan tell you a little bit about the crew itself. Um, but we had a directive from the board of directors to look into expanding membership to a younger uh, demographic than what we typically tend towards. Um, we're a very high-end wine and food organization across the board. Our ticket prices are a little higher than most. Uh, and so for that reason, um, we felt it important to start something that's more affordable to the up-and-coming um, person who's just excited, educated, or wants to get educated about wine and food. So Morgan, I'll let you talk a little bit about the crew. My microphone's off? Oh, your microphone's off. All right, I'll take it. Apparently, you can't hear Morgan through my microphone. So, um, so what the crew is is it's a it's a membership for those 35 and under. Uh, you basically get benefits for two at the $55 level, as opposed to to just one at the $50 level of our regular membership. And then we're also going to do specialty events just for the crew. We just had our first party called the Premier Crew at CTC Gardens. Um, about 115, 120 people showed up. Knocked back more wine than I care to mention. Had a really good time. It was the night that it was freezing cold and blustery and windy about two weeks ago. But uh, everyone came in, hung out, had a wonderful time. We plan on doing a lot of education. We'll do cocktail events, beer events, wine events, food events, trailer events, anything to really activate uh, those really interested in learning more about wine and food, um, but just necessarily haven't had the means to do so to date. Okay, and if people want to learn more about your organization, where can they find information? Yep, so everything's on our website, um, our brand new beautiful WordPress website, winefoodfoundation.org. Uh, if you want to find out about the crew, um, it's under affiliates, or you can go to winefoodfoundation.org backslash CRU. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you very much.